Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java, lesson number 14. Here we're going to cover the very important topic uh, where we're going to combine the concept of arrays that we've talked about several times with the concept of a string, which we've been talking about a lot recently. So if you remember, in the past we have uh, talked quite a bit about the concept of an array. And an array is really just a collection of similar types of data that are logically grouped together. So for instance, I might create uh, an array and I might be of type integer and I might just call it uh, array one, let's say. And inside of that, we learned that there's several different ways to declare an array, but I can go ahead and put the values that I want to be stored inside of that array just by putting them separated by commas here, right? Inside of curly braces. Now, of course, to specify this as being an array that's going to hold multiple values, we need to put our open and close brackets. And so now we have not just a single variable that's going to hold a single number, but we have, uh, in this case, we've got an array that's going to hold one, two, three, four, five values. Java knows to set aside five memory locations of type integer because I've actually specified and told Java to uh, go ahead and do that here. And, and, and I've, I've listed the numbers, and so it knows how much space is required. Now, what we can do is exactly the same concept with um, with strings as well. So I can do something like uh, create a string array, right? So I can create an array to hold strings. Now, just like for the integer, I had to tell it what type of data was gonna be stored in this array. So here I'm typing string for the same purpose, and I'm going to put uh, string, I'm gonna name it sentence, right? I'm gonna put my double bracket there to indicate that this is indeed an array. And inside of here, I'm gonna put an open and curly brace, and I can actually specify the strings that are going to, to be inside of each element of this array. So for instance, the first string might be I, and then the next string might be love, and then after that, to travel, to far away, places. So here we have an array and the name of the array is called sentence and each element of this array is a separate string. So element one is this string, element two is this string, element three is this string, element four is this string, element five is this string. All right now don't forget though that strings uh, and arrays uh, are always, when you start counting an array, you always start counting the first element as element zero. So this is element zero of the array, element one, element two, three, and four. So if we want to access the individual elements of the array that we've named a sentence, it's very easy to do. We can say string or system dot out dot print ln like this. And then simply I can say sentence bracket zero. This is exactly the same thing we did when we were accessing array elements. It's the same thing, it's just that element zero now contains a string. So if we run this, we're just going to get the letter I printed. All right. And then if we, of course, add to that a space, and then add to that sentence bracket one, then we're going to get let me go ahead and hit save, let me go ahead and hit run. We're going to get the first two elements of this array, which is the first two words. So we can continue this whole thing and put another space here and then put sentence two and then plus plus sentence three. So zero, one, two, three, let's see where we're at. I love to travel too far away. And then of course the last thing, plus bracket, or I should say blank space sentence, bracket four. And that's gonna be the last element in that array. And of course there's a error there and that's because I forgot to put a plus uh, there. So basically anytime you have things in the print statement, you have to have pluses separating all of the different terms. I love to travel to far away places. So this looks like we've just done one single print uh, of one single item. But really what's happening inside of this is I'm accessing the different elements of the array that I have created by creating this array called sentence. And the print, uh, what, what's happening is this guy is referencing the first string, this guy is referencing this string and so on, and I'm just putting spaces between everything. So it's a little bit more complicated what's happening behind the scenes uh, than you might imagine 
first in, in the first place. Now, of course, I can change the way this looks, right, very simply by just changing how I've initialized my guy. So instead of far away places, I could say far away countries if I wanted to. I can put a period, for instance. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and I can hit run away, run again. And so I can, of course, see that I've reflected that change. But let's say that you you want to change the uh, last word in the sentence after I've already initialized. Like, in other words, it's pretty inconvenient to come back here and change how I've initialized this guy. So instead of doing that, let's go ahead and just change just that last term. So the way I can do that is uh, accessing that element of the array. Sentence bracket four, because it's the fifth element of the array, is equal to, and I can just change that from countries to, uh, I could say, faraway continents. Notice that I ha I've had to enclose that in quotation marks because I'm trying to store a string into this element of the array. That is illegal because this array is built to hold strings. So this is just like any other assignment if I'm going to assign a different number to an element of an array that holds integers. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this very long guy here and I'm going to control C to copy that and I'm going to paste the same print uh, sentence underneath it. So we'll see how the two things change. Let me hit save and hit run and you can see what happens. The first print statement is made right after the declaration of the array, after I've stored everything in here and I get the first guy. Then I just modify the, the, uh, the last string there and then I can see how that is reflected as I go and, uh, and do that and print it out a second time. So the bottom line is you can create arrays of strings. You can initialize the different elements in that array whenever you create it, just like you can do for any array. And then you can print them, you can make changes, you can access them using the same notation that we've always learned for accessing elements of arrays. Now the other thing I want to show you is in this case I've created this array here and I've put the strings in there as I have created the array. Let me show you how to create the array and then update the contents of the array after the initialization. So let's create another string array, and this time we'll just call it array2. Right? We'll put the double bracket, which means this is an array. Now, in this case, we put the curly braces and we've told Java exactly what we want to go into the array. But in this case, let's say we only want three elements of this array, but we don't want to put the strings in there just yet. Let's say we want to create a new array of type string a new array of type string and then we have to open our brackets and tell Java how many memory locations we want to reserve. In this case we put the number three. So the way you read this is you're like, okay, I want to create an array of hold string elements. The name of the array is going to be called array2. The brackets tell Java it's a one-dimensional array and instead of putting the actual items into the array at the outset, I'm just going to reserve the memory by creating a new string object. This follows the same convention as creating objects of type string uh, which is an array of three elements. So in this case, I've just made the assignment on the right hand side at the outset. Here I'm just setting aside the memory and I'm going to make the assignments later. So let me tighten up this. Okay, and then over here on the left hand side underneath, let's go ahead and make some assignments here. So I can say array 2, that's the new array that we've created. The zeroth element, which is the first basic element in the array, I can make it and set it equal to uh, buttercups are awesome. Right? And then I can say array2, the next element, I do love to take walks in the park. And then the last one, array2, two, element2, two, and I can just make this a simple, you know, I love spaghetti, which is true. I do love spaghetti. Okay, so then I can have something like that. Now, what I'll do here is I'll show you that this compiles just fine. We hit run, everything runs just fine, and I can go ahead and put a print statement system.out.println, and inside of that I can just say array2 bracket 0. That's the uh, element zero of this array and when I print that out what I get is buttercups are awesome and I can take this guy let me hit copy just to speed it up copy and paste again and then put element one in this one and element two in that one at that at that index so I should say zeroth index one index and two index so I'm basically looking to print out everything that I just stored in that array 
Now let me show you. If I accidentally say array two bracket three equals uh, butterflies, and I close my bracket as I properly should here, then let's see what happens. I'll hit save and then I'll hit run. I'm going to get an exception. It says array index out of bounds uh, right here because uh, of course I only told Java that I wanted three elements in this array. This is the first element. This is the second element. This is the third element. This would be the fourth element. I've never, uh, I've never uh, reserved enough memory to do that. Now if I actually change this to a four, then it'll compile and run just fine. So let's change that back to a three the way it was. Let's take this back the way it was and let's copy one of these print statements and put that down and you'll see the same thing happen. If I accidentally try to print uh, an array element outside of bounds, I'm going to get the same kind of thing. So that's basically what I wanted to teach you in this lesson. We've learned about the concept of arrays. They're very, very useful for grouping information that is similar in nature. We've mostly been focusing on integer arrays, uh, double arrays. Uh, and so on, but now we're combining the concept of an array with the concept of a string. So here we can create an array, that's what the brackets in the name means, of type string or to hold string elements. Everything in here must be associated with a string. Now you can declare it and put the stuff in there when, at the outset, or you can just declare the array as an object as you typically would, and then you can make the assignments later. Um, so this is very, very useful for things like storing maybe names and addresses. Maybe the zeroth element will be the name, the next element will be the address, the next element after that will be the phone number, and so on. So you can group information accordingly. There are many, many, many uses for arrays. You access them using the indices here. The thing you need to remember is that arrays always start counting at zero, so don't, don't let that screw you up. If you're going to loop through a loop, you've got to start counting at zero to catch all of the elements. Make sure you understand this, then follow me on to the uh, uh, exercise where you can get some practice for yourself and make sure you understand this because arrays and strings are like peanut butter and jelly. You use them all the time. Make sure you're comfortable and then follow me on to the next lesson in Mastering Java.